Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and in this video we are going to learn how to convert moles to kilograms and kilograms to moles for elements on the periodic table. So grab your periodic table of elements, grab your scientific calculators, pay attention and let's start working some problems. In this first example here, it says how many moles are in 1.93 times 10 to the negative second kilograms of tin. So in this problem, once again, it says how many moles are in 1.93 times 10 to the negative second kilograms of tin. So we're talking about tin in this problem. And if we take a look at tin on the periodic table, we can see that it is right here. Number 50 on the periodic table is going to be 10. And if we take a closer look at tin, what we can gather from this little box on our periodic table is the molar mass of tin. What this box is telling us, specifically this number right below the chemical symbol, is that for every one mole of tin, it is going to have a mass of 1.18, I'm sorry, 118.71 grams of tin. So in an earlier video, we learned the relationship between moles and mass and Avogadro's number. We can even say that this many grams of tin will contain 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of tin. And this little number right here is called Avogadro's number. But in this problem right here, it says how many moles are in 1.93 times 10 to the negative second kilograms of tin. So in this problem, we're starting off with 1.93 times 10 to the negative second kilograms of tin. And what we want to do is we want to figure out how many moles of tin this is. But if we take a look at the periodic table of elements, this value right here, this 118.71 is the molar mass of tin expressed in grams per mole, right? Grams per mole is going to be our unit of measurement for molar mass. This problem here, though, is starting off with kilograms. So the very first thing that we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to convert the kilograms to grams. And after we figure out the number of grams, we can then convert that mass to moles. So this problem here is going to be a two-step process. So in our very first step, what we are going to do is we are going to cancel out kilograms of tin. So where do you think we're going to put that in this equivalent statement right here or in this fraction right here? Well, we're going to have to put it at the bottom so that way that unit will cancel out. Remember, if we have one thing in the numerator and that same exact thing in the denominator, they can cancel out even if they're units. All right, so we want to convert kilograms of tin to just grams of tin. And so now what you need to do is you need to take a look at a metric prefix chart or a metric prefix table, or perhaps you watch one of my earlier videos where we talked about metric prefixes and kilo. What does kilo mean? Well, kilo means 10 to the third or 1,000. And so what this means is that there are 1,000 of these tiny little grams in one big kilogram. So that is our uh, equivalency statement here that we're going to use. Take a look at what happens now. Kilograms of tin on the numerator and the denominator both cancel out, leaving us with grams of tin. But we're not asked to figure out grams of tin. We're asked to figure out the number of moles of tin. So we have to take it one step further. We want to cancel out grams of tin now. So that's going to go at the bottom or in the denominator of our equivalent statement. And we want to convert to moles of tin. So that will go in the numerator. So now ask yourself, what is the relationship that exists between moles of tin and grams of tin? Well, we just said that up here. We used our periodic table to figure that out. One mole of tin is equal to 118.71 grams of tin. Take a look at what happens now. Grams of tin in the numerator and denominator cancel out, leaving us with what unit of measurement left over? You guessed it, moles of tin, which is what the question was asking for. We're asked to figure out how many moles are in 1.93 times 10 to the negative second kilograms of tin. So now how we 
how are we going to put this in our calculator? Well, we're going to start all the way on the left with our very first value or our given value. We're going to work our way from left to right. And if we come across a number other than one that's in the, num that's in the numerator, we're going to multiply by it. And if we come across a number other than one that's in the denominator, we're going to divide by it. And we can essentially ignore values of one here and one here, because if we multiply by one, it's going to equal the same number. And if we divide by one, it's also going to equal the same number. So here we go. Let's do this. We have 1.93 times 10 to the negative 2 times 1,000. And we're going to divide this by 118.71. And we're going to end up with a value of 1.63. times 10 to the negative first moles of 10. So let's take a look. How many moles are in 1.93 times 10 to the negative first kilograms of 10? Well, it looks like there's 1.63 times 10 to the negative first moles of 10. Let's take a look at another example. In the second example, it says how many kilograms are in 5.57 times 10 to the third moles of antimony. So in this problem right here, we are asked to figure out how many kilograms there are in 5.57 times 10 to the third moles of antimony. So let's go ahead and find antimony on our periodic table of elements. And if we take a look at antimony, antimony is right here, number 51 on our periodic table. And so if we take a close look at antimony, what we can see here is that one mole of antimony is going to be equal to 121.76 grams of antimony. Our periodic table tells us that this is the amount of grams of antimony per mole. And we also know that this many grams of antimony will contain 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Right? We learned in an earlier video the relationship of moles to mass and Avogadro's number, and here's how they're all related. But in this problem right here, we are asked to determine the number of kilograms in 5.57 times 10 to the third moles of antimony. So let's go ahead and solve this problem. We have, or we're starting off with 5.57 times 10 to the third moles of antimony. And what we want to do here is we want to figure out how many kilograms this is going to be. So let's think about this here. We know the number of moles. We also know the molar mass of antimony expressed in grams per mole. But the question is asking for kilograms. We want to know the mass in kilograms. So the very first thing that we should probably do right here is convert the, the moles of antimony to grams of antimony. So we're going to have to cancel out moles of antimony. So where do you think we're going to put that in this equivalent statement? We're going to put it at the bottom and we're going to convert to grams of antimony. So we'll put that at the top. So what is the relationship now between these two units? Well, our periodic table tells us the relationship between the mass and grams of antimony and the number of moles of antimony. It's right here. We just got done writing it down. We said that one mole of antimony is 121.76 grams. Take a look now at what cancels. We have moles of SB in the numerator and denominator. They can now cancel, leaving us with grams of antimony. But the question is asking for kilograms. So we have to take it one step further. We have to cancel out grams of antimony. So we're going to put that in the denominator here. And we're going to convert this to kilograms of antimony. So we're going to put that in the numerator. So now what relationship exists between these two units right here? Well, once again, you can take a look at a metric prefix chart. Or if you have these metric prefixes memorized, you know that the prefix met, uh, kilo, the prefix kilo is 10 to the third or 1,000. This means that there are 1,000 tiny little grams in one big kilogram. 
So take a look now. Grams of antimony in the numerator and denominator now cancel, leaving us with what unit left over in our final answer? You guessed it, kilograms of antimony. So, how do we put this in our calculator? Well, we're going to take this, the given quantity, we're going to multiply it by this since it's in the numerator, and then we're going to divide by a thousand since it's in the denominator. So let's go ahead and do that. We have 5.57 times 10 to the third times 121.76 divided by a thousand. And we end up with 6.78. times 10 to the second kilograms of antimony as our answer. So if we have this many moles of antimony, that is going to be equal to this many kilograms of antimony. So let's take a look at a couple more problems that you can try on your own. And so what I recommend that you do at this point is pause the video. It says perform the following calculations, round your answer to three significant figures, and put your answer in scientific notation. So here's a problem set of five example problems. I recommend you pause the video, get your calculator out, take out your periodic table, and try these on your own. And I'm going to give you the answer in five, four, three, two, one. Here you go. Here are the answers. How did you do? If you got them all right, then you know what you're doing. If you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and that's gonna subscribe you to my channel. And feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment section down below. And I really hope you guys found this helpful.